Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we're going to do a first look distro review of an old but resurrected distribution. This was just re-released a couple weeks ago, January 30th, 2023, and this is Legacy OS based out of Australia, and it is based on, originally based on Puppy Linux, with the aim to produce a Linux distribution that A, could work on really old computers, and B, would have a more usable, more user-friendly, and even aimed at teenagers Linux distribution. I think that their idea here is kids can sometimes get their hands on you know, parents' old computers, and they might be pretty old and won't work well with under, you know, the the current releases of software or they're out of date or Windows 11 shames you into buying a new computer. And so, you know, you go out and you have a brand new uh, computer and then you give the old one to your teenager who's just coming of age. Well, this was a distribution that you could put on there and it's more user-friendly than Puppy Linux, which while being really good, is not the most user-friendly distro. But then it also has a lot of software designed to work on an older computer. Now, the new version is actually based on Antix, which we haven't looked at for a while. Uh, Antix is developed by the same developer and maintainer of MX Linux. And the idea of Antix is to have a primarily system D uh, free version of Debian that has a lot of extra cool tools and features. Of course, the most controversial video uh, about Antix that I've ever done is the one looking at some of the bookmarks that were left behind in Firefox, which had some uh, very interesting content in there. We'll put it that way. But nevertheless, um, we're going to overlook any of that and look at what this distribution looks like. So why might they do Antix instead of Puppy? Well, being free of System D is probably a good reason as System D does take up a few extra resources. I know when my old Linux Mint went from what it was up to System D, the first version, it actually more than doubled the boot time of the computer, which on an older uh, mechanical hard drive you notice and on a SSD you really don't. And that's possibly one of the reasons why they did that. The other reason you might do that is Antix does have a lot of good tools, although I, I find that it doesn't have um, a few of the tools in MX Linux. Um, but uh, still, uh, looking at Antix and uh, this is certainly a, um, a good thing. Uh, the thing I'm going to mention real quick, it's hard to spot through me for a loop if you want to give this a try. You are, are going to be presented with a login screen, user, and password are both demo. Uh, that was actually hard information to find. It's just buried inside this brick of text over here. Wasn't very obvious, and I had to go short sort it out. They actually say when you get logged in without the, um, without the uh, ICE Window Manager login screen, they actually say, hey, use uh, root and root, but when you try and do that on the login screen, those are disabled, causing me to have to scramble to find the information. Of course, this is just their, their updates. You'll see the previous update was uh, 2015. They took an eight-year-ish, uh, maybe seven-year-ish hiatus, and then they just released um, Legacy OS uh, the brand new version here that we are going to have a look at today. So I've not seen this one before, mostly because I really haven't been super active in doing distro reviews in these um, seven years in between things. So we're going to go ahead and have a look. The installer is very much like the same thing that you find with uh, Antix and MX Linux, uh, which is an installer. I, I do kind of like it. You set up some of the users and configurations while it's installing. It can save a little bit of time. Uh, you have the option to encrypt it or not encrypt it. I did notice we, the checkboxes to enable network sharing through Samba are completely disabled. So if you are wanting to do that, maybe it, it won't work. I don't know. I'll turn on my NAS here and uh, we'll see what it work, what it does. Let's go ahead and boot into it and uh, hopefully it gets in there. I did have a few issues with getting right onto the login screen, but that's not an issue with that. I think that's an issue with my computer slash GNOME boxes as I do notice uh, several distributions do actually give me that problem. So once I get logged into the screen here, then we'll go ahead and come back. All right, so here we are. We're going to start in, and it just tells us antics up here. So looks like one of the things they didn't do a ton to really brand it as their own as much. Uh, mostly um, just having a brief look at it, it, it just gives a uh, an overall appearance of being 
a um, uh, an antics with a bunch of extra software installed, a few different themes, and uh, I'm not sure if Antics uses Ice Window Manager as default. As I said, I haven't looked at it for a while. Uh, now that we're here, you can press the Ice the uh, F1 key and you can switch between different session types. There's a minimal ice, rocks ice, ZZZ ice. Um, I do not familiar enough with Ice Manager to uh, tell exactly what those are. But let's go ahead and get logged in here. I set in uh, legacy and then entered my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. And then we get landed here on the desktop. It looks like it is not saving um, my variables for the uh, correct screen resolution. So let's just go ahead and fix that real quick. Uh, I didn't even, this time it didn't say, it's weird because last time it did save my, um, what is it doing? It's like number lock is doing weird stuff. All right, there we are. Now we're back. All right. All right, so there we have uh, there we have our uh, our desktop there, and uh, when we get logged in here, and you do need to reset the wallpaper to to fix the uh, what's going on there with the desktop. So let's just go ahead and do that now. We have a couple different uh, wallpapers to choose from, so we have a couple defaults. I'll just go back to this one here, which I actually think is actually just a little bit down the road from where I took my pictures of, uh, of Aurora Borealis. Um, because I believe this is the hotel that was a little off in the distance from mine, which, uh, if I am correct, then this would be taken over Voyagers. But, um, uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'm not 100% sure about that. Just, uh, an observation. I, I do remember these four peaks <laughs> anyway. Um, so let's go ahead and have a look first. Um, when we get logged in here, um, we have a control center. Uh, the control center in Antics is not quite as good as the control center that we saw in MX Linux, although it is pretty perilously close. So we'll say, sure, it's pretty nice. Uh, of course, we saw the choose wallpaper. You have uh, ICE Window Manager settings here. Um, so if you're familiar with that, and I am not an expert on the Window Manager, on the ICE Window Manager, so... I've used it a few times. I can make my way around it, and that's about it. Here's customizing your look and feel. So we have a few different options there. So you can kind of choose whichever kind you would like to uh, to use here. It does have a, a more of an older look to it, so uh, just be aware of that. Let's go with let's go with that. Sure. All right. And then under software, we have a package updater. We have uh, an auto remove, which will run the uh, sudo apt auto remove. We can manage our packages. Um, this one here is Synaptic Package Manager. Uh, repo Manager. Not sure exactly which that one is. Let's see that one there. Okay. So these are what repo do you want to use? Oh, so I'm using a repo from over there. Let's go ahead and switch our repo to, you know, let's go with Atlanta, Georgia. What's close to me right now? Yeah. I think this might actually be the closest to where I'm at right this moment. So, okay, there's Antics. Here's your Debian repos. And then, so you can see we have uh, Bullseye and we have Bullseye Security. Um, and we can see that we have our non-free is enabled in each of these guys here. If you wanted to, to test over, switch over to like testing and things, unstable, SID, you could actually do all that from inside of here and then um, go ahead and make those individual changes. And then here's your um, uh, your individual sources. So they do actually have a few extra sources in here that they had mentioned. Um, they have the Microsoft in here. Um, so if you want to install um, Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome, like, ew, so you can turn those off if you don't. Uh, there's basic SID stuff. The, these are installed in here for the people that do want to use those. They're not installed by default, but they make it easy to install them through the software uh, store because they've added those repos. Um, so that's actually uh, a nice uh, nice option that we have uh, as well. And then there's a few other options that we have. So sure, let's go ahead and do that. And we'll go ahead and close that. And then our package installer. This is the software installer that we find um, inside of MX Linux. Uh, which is a really good one because it's it's easy to use. It's easy to understand. We have Waterfox Classic Current, G3. Um, we have a, 
uh, Tor browser. We have ungoogled Chromium. Uh, here's your Google Chrome. And Microsoft Edge should be in this list somewhere. I might just be missing it. Uh, apparently, I'm just missing it. So there you have it. Uh, so here's different applications that we have. You can experiment with different desktop environments if you want to here. That's something that um, uh, that is easy to spot. So here's some non-free. Okay, um, one of the things that Legacy does do is it does install your video, uh, your non-free video codecs and things like that. So that's why that stuff is blanked out. So uh, this actually does have with it a lot of uh, tools and, and tricks that you might want uh, already set up so you don't have to install extra codecs and things like that. Uh, startup services, uh, alternatives, date and time, configuration. Here's your network stuff. Here's your shares. And... Um, there's that. Here's your disks. We do have uh, the ability to make a live USB maker. We can do uh, partition imaging, uh, synchronizing directories. And then we have um, some hardware options, and we have drivers. They actually have brother printer drivers. Uh, that's a really cool thing because I brother printers are the printers I use. They work well with Linux. Drivers are available for Linux by, uh, by the company, and I've never had problems with them, and they don't tend to lock me out of, you know, uh, pay us more money or you will never be able to use your ink again. <laughs> we can make a, a snapshot of our ISO. We can do boot repair stuff, system backups, menu editors. So lots of cool stuff that we have um, available. You can see that there is a ton of software installed. And uh, some people will look at this and go, oh, that's really cool. Um, uh, for me, I'm not a huge fan of all this kind of stuff in here, but what I do like it for is it does give you um, some, uh, it gives you some uh, um, idea as to what other software might be out there. And that's what I really do like about it, uh, that there is, there are so many things in here that you can be like, oh, what is this application? Let's play with this. And you go, oh, that's kind of cool. So you can see, but there's, uh, you can tell it's a little overkill. Um, they do have only Office installed by default, uh, which is uh, an interesting one in that the, it, it kind of goes differently than most distributions will use LibreOffice. Of course, Manjaro tried to replace LibreOffice with something else, and um, uh, there was a lot of controversy, so now they give you the option as to which one you want to do. Uh, only Office is respectable. Um, I, I'm not still not sure it's fully as good as some people say it is. Uh, but as I have been experimenting with it, uh, mostly in the course of doing writing things just to see if it's a, a good alternative out there for authors, um, I found it does actually have some good some good compatibility with Microsoft Office. I still do find LibreOffice to be a, um, a better, uh, a better uh, option overall. But that's okay. Here's your basic preferences. Here's your programming and our system tools. So we do have a lot of uh, different options here. You can see we're running on 100 megabytes, 171 megabytes. I mean, that's, that is really awesome. So that does tell you how well this system is going to work. So this certainly is something that is going to be very good for people who do have lower spec computer. If you're one of the people that you're like, I don't need to save my computer and Windows keeps on wanting to force it, it'd be worth giving this one a try for uh, for sure. Let's go ahead and uh, look at that little uh, controversial part here and um, see if they still put those uh, um, bookmarks inside of here. My guess is, and some of the discussion on that video, which was a long time ago, is that that was still a beta version that we tested out on uh, Antics, and it's very possible just things weren't scrubbed out of there before the final release. Um, you never know. Um, so overall, the installation is very easy, very quick to use. The system is very snappy. It does have an older look, so it's it's not a lot of eye candy to look at, but it does uh, seem to work really well here. It's going to work really well under even really old computers. I didn't notice if there's a 32-bit or just a 64-bit version of it. Uh, there was really only one download presented, meaning it probably is only 64-bit. But um, it does give you a lot of extra tools. For me personally, I'm not sure I would go with it as a regular daily driver. 
simply because there's so many applications in it. Um, since my computers aren't so old that I need um, just very few things, uh, honestly, I it's it's just it's one with um, I, the appearance is not as nice as I could have. It's probably going to lack some of the online uh, accessibility that I like syncing my next cloud in to sync my calendars and contacts into my into my main system, which. Uh, of course, my Cinnamon uh, OS can do. Uh, even my um, Plasma systems can do that as well. And the a lot of extra software. I actually do not like a lot of bloatware on my main system. So for me, I like going with the more minimal distributions. I will even uninstall software I don't need and just install the packages that I do need. So that's kind of my general approach. So I wouldn't use it as my personal daily driver, but there's a lot of people out there who would like this approach. And honestly, in that approach, this is a very nice distribution. Uh, if nothing else, you can learn about a few other options in there uh, and then you can kind of just just see how how good an old computer can still run on Linux and this is one of those testaments as to why I'm frustrated by the number the fact that every computer company out there that sells Linux only sells like the highest end computers that your average person is not going to go out to the store and afford. Whereas you could put together a, a lower spec system, a budget computer and actually put something like this on it. And people wouldn't even know it was low spec. That would be a great thing to provide to people who, uh, may not be, uh, may not be as aware of, um, um, your system resources are the need for them. But I imagine I could get onto here without a problem. I imagine I could do videos. I could do anything that I would need to do. And all the software is going to run pretty well. So there is my look at Legacy OS. I'll go ahead and link their site down below. They did say they are working on a new website. Uh, but you can go ahead and give this a try, particularly if you have an older computer. You want to see what this can do with it. And uh, it is definitely uh, worth having a look at. Of course, this is also um, the same people who brought us uh, Puppy Linux, which is also another really good Linux distribution. So thanks for watching this video today, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.